okay i finally wrote something for the beginning of this episode hey i don't have time ready yeah <laughs> Welcome to Unfinished Business Afterworld, the show where I've been forgetting to do an official opener since we started filming for season two. Oops. We are self-produced and do utilize some online tools for our gaming needs. If you joined us for season one, you know that those things are Roll20 and D&D Beyond, which we think you are still good with. And if we're not, I guess we'll find out eventually. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome to Param a planet created by the shape-shifting deity, Param the Laughter. Yes, they named the planet after themselves because why wouldn't you? Now, after breaking Ray's pact with Euphoria, you guys realize you probably needed to get the hell out of Dodge uh, because she would most likely be sending the pink suits after you. And you decided finding the Thieves Guild was your best bet. So Amelite has led you to their apparent hideout, you think thieves can't, and you are now standing outside of the garden entrance to the Thieves Guild. You are all standing in, it's like a T intersection, uh, in Noir main city. <laughs> Across from you are a bunch of brick houses, and behind you on the two corners, is another corner brick house. And then over here is what looks to be a church. Um, as you're standing there, steam rises up off of the stone pavement. The air is dark. Uh, while you were traveling to this area, yeah, Liga? What kind of church? Uh, you can roll a perception check for me. I'm guessing Methodist. Just kidding. Right. Yeah, like I was like, what, like, Baptist? I'm Baptist. Baptist. Yeah. It's a what are we doing here? Hang on, sorry, my it's dice. Like, I have my dice. It's just the, I can't untie it. Not yeah. looking at it is helping. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. I like that you're trying to like do it like discreetly off screen or something. <laughs> That's a secret. Uh, eight, twelve, well, twelve, twelve plus uh four. Twelve plus four. Sixteen. All right, um, you look behind you at the church uh, and are trying to get a read on who it is to, and it looks like this is just straight up a church to the darkness. Um, okay. Sign out front does say, you know, church of the darkness, and there is a dragonborn who is coming out of the doors. What color, Dragonborn? Purple. They already rescued Roscoe, guys. We don't got to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopper, Dragonborn. Hopper. And he seems to be closing up the church uh, and getting ready to go about his day, evening, noir city timeline. Um, He looks over at you guys, gives you a little nod. Where next, Emily? Hmm? Where next? It, well, it's, isn't it? It's right. It's here. And I gesture. Right? Isn't there a door? Yeah, there's a door. There's a door uh, and the thieves can't written above it is like, um, it, this is the guild. <laughs> well, no. this is the guild. <laughs> um, um, I guess no, I just should just be, uh, I, I just want to, I, hmm. so uh, these are circles I'm a little unfamiliar with uh, uh, as a thing and I was just wondering is it are there like um is there like trickery involved in such things like if there's a sign that says this is the guild is that like not a good place to go mm -hmm. or some I don't really no. know 
I'm honestly uh... I'm watching the copper dragonborn while this conversation is happening trying to do it like discreetly but sure uh give me a stealth check Rhea and then Amalite if you want to give me like an insight or an investigation or a perception check whichever one <laughs> Is this one, one of the three? My armor gives me disadvantage oh, on stealth. Does that apply to this role? It's not going to apply to this role. <laughs> you look so you look at him so hard that your armor jingles. Yeah, like, clink, clink, clink. Uh, we're off um, I I got a ten. Mm -hmm. I rolled a two, so I added my eight perception, and I got a ten. Eight perception. Oh my gosh! All right, you got a ten. Raya, what did you get? I got a five. You got a five. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, three. <laughs> woof, woof. woof, woof. So he um, heads towards you guys. Uh, and just, he's got like one of those sort of flat black hats on. Um, and his robes, his priestly robes are all black as well. Uh, with a small sort of moon where like a Catholic's little white collar would be and he tips his hat to you evening ladies and sort of steps around you uh and into the alley that is next to the building that is the thieves guild uh, i want to like you, you can if you want watch him walk down the alley which has a couple <clears throat> of dim lights down the way uh, and he heads to a door, uh, jiggles the handle a little bit, and enters the building through a side entrance. Um, Amalette, you got a 10 total for your perception check. Uh, as Dr. Rumbletack is saying the words about, like, should you trust the very obvious sign, even though it isn't thieves can't? But would the thieves try to be tricky about the own entrance to their door? It feels like a Schrodinger's cat situation, you know, that famous cat who he theorized that if you're if you can't be seen, are you even inside a box? He was a great philosopher amongst the tabaxi. <laughs> <laughs> we really respected him, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even I've heard of him. It was crazy. Um, yeah. um, I think I'm going to like kind of sidestep up to the door. And also like, keep in mind, Amalite is new to being a rogue. Um, only level two in rogue. Yeah. So I think like a lot of what she knows about being a rogue, she makes up as she goes. So when she like steps up there, you can tell that it's like really her trying to be sneaky and stealthy. And she just like, with her wait, first two. Wait. I kind of want to see where that guy went. I just want to, I'm just going to go take a look at the door real fast. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. no, that's totally, that's cool. Yeah, I trust <laughs> I'm gonna, this is the I'm going to go with Ray. I'm going to pretend like I'm not curious, but I'm just going to be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll go with you, but like try and like behind her. All right. I just want to like go down the alley and I only want to go as far as I need to to like see the door and see if there's anything written on it, if there's any like distinguishing features. <laughs> Did any of you guys do like a perception check on the street before we you did it on the church? Last time you did it on the church specifically. Um, did not. Did anybody do like a clock around of your surroundings? Okay, great. Just checking. <laughs> um what we do now. What Eighteen harpies attack you. What? What is everyone's passive? passives? Passive perceptions. Uh, I gotta love it when a DM says that. Uh, let's see. My passive is eighteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Twelve. Look oh, at that! Oh, so proportional. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ray and Laika, are you guys trying to be quiet down the alley, or are you just like you've already been seen? So uh, we're I'm I'm strolling. I am. I'm gonna roll, and it's gonna be bad, but I am. Oh, I'm not trying. Okay. I just or like I guess it's worse when I try. Yeah, trying to be subtle. Okay. Do you want to give me a performance check for how casual you guys are? <laughs> no. No, I I, 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 I do. I want to do it. 
I'll, I'll give I a fly I, casual I check. <laughs> I'll do a fly casual check. Can I do it for both of us? I don't know. Fly casual. You can give. You can 18. give. Eighteen. Like, give Raya the help action with how? Oh, eighteen. That's very casual. You can give Raya the help action for being more casual, casual. as fuck. You are yeah. a scruffy headed nerf herder. I sure but fucking am. Give me advantage. Yeah, she's giving you the help action, so you get advantage. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. What you your Raya starts to like try and be way too like obviously <laughs> casual, and you're like right, right, just like, like Raya, yeah. what like hand opposite leg. <laughs> um, and you make your way down towards the the door that the copper dragon went through. Um, it is a pretty plain looking door, plain looking side door. Uh, it's made of wood. There is a little metal handle. Um, it's got a knob. It has got a keyhole above the knob. Um, this side of the alley looks rough, kind of weather beaten, broken down. You know, it's an alley. It's not very well taken care of. Um, I'm going to nudge Raya right and be like, oh, sorry. You can give me investigation checks or survival checks in this alley if you want to find out any other information before you do whatever you're going to do with the door. Uh, we got a natural one, so. You're like very concentrated. You've leaned against the wall next to the door. You're still carrying on a casual act, I think. I look so casual right now. Oh, I got an 18 survival. survival. Something I, I'm good at. I look so casual that I accidentally look casually too. <laughs> you do. <laughs> look, you look too casually around the alley. But don't worry because Ray is not as casual. And that was all my brain power any- for the night. Bye, guys. Perfect. <laughs> You're beautiful, Byer. You're gorgeous. Um, Raya, you bend down to check out the area in front of this door and sort of see what kind of pathways are walked through this alley. And even though it is paved, there is a level of grime on these stones uh, that you can tell has been sort of worn down into a path. Like a lot of people frequent this area of the building and frequent this alley, go in and out of this door. Um, Okay. Um, Any symbols or anything? Um, there is one symbol of a small bird that is very worn down. You can barely see it. That is in the knob itself. Okay. Um, and it looks, it's the kind of worn down from a lot of hands. Like, yeah. Using the doorknob. Um, I do want to take a look around now and see if like. I notice anyone watching us, anyone else like hiding in the alley. Yeah. Um, I think my perception is not great, but oh no, my perception is not bad actually. Can I roll Thank that you. while I'm being casual? Can I perceive? Yeah. 18? 19. 19. Oh, okay. Six plus four. Nine plus four. 13. 13. 13. 19 and 13. Um, there is no one that you guys can see from this alley or in this alley. You can tell that the building where this door, sorry, is in the side of, there are a couple of windows. Um, it looks like a, a house, like people would live here um, permanently, like a permanent residence kind of a thing versus an inn or something like that. Um, or like something that has a storefront. There's no storefront to this. A single family home. Yeah. Single family home or apartments. I kind of like. Different than the architecture that you guys are used to, but you can tell that it is a house. Like Dr. Rumbletack, these these kind of houses are more, uh, more your speed as far as dwellings go. You probably look at these and assume that they are all like single family row homes kind of a thing. Like this is, this is a housing situation that probably would be it's like a dirtier version of what they had for the professors at your university. Um, I kind of like gesture my head back like the way that we came and start walking back to the group. Um, and you probably noticed that this, you'd notice this architecture as well from all of your travels. Like you would have seen early versions of this kind of house being built in certain places. Sorry, who was that too? Amelite. 
Oh, oh okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Rumble Talk's getting a little nervous, so I think he's going to take Pid out uh, and and sort of like look over his shoulder yeah. and uh, be like, um, can you just uh, maybe fly over that wall very carefully and see if you see any of those um, people in, in pink jackets nearby? Oh, yeah, I forgot we're sort of like actively terrified right now. Yeah, we're on the run. Um, Pid flies up as high as she can above the buildings and looks around. Does Pid have dark vision? Uh, she does for 60 feet. For 60 feet, okay. Um, and can you give me a perception check for Pid? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay. That's been great. Classic familiar stats. Pid flies back down to you. Well, that's a relief. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> into my jacket. <laughs> um, while Amelite, or not, I'm Amelite. Uh, in a day. While Rhea and Laika are down the alley and the doc is doing that with Pid, can, can Amelite have her ear pressed up against the door and see if she can hear anything? Yeah. Oh, sweet girl. She totally looked like a puppy for a second. That was really weird. <laughs> like a puppy said. Um, so I got a 16. Okay. You can't make anything out through the door. Um, okay. The the wood seems to be like you you try to get in like towards one of those cracks, like in between a wood paneled door, but it's pretty seamless. Okay, I think with that in mind, and considering the fact that she's fully unsupervised, Amalite will knock twice oh. on the door. Nice. Okay, great. Um, we'll say that uh, probably happened pretty fast. Um, as Rhea and Laika, you are heading back out of the alley. You hear Amalite knock twice. Don't you? I like quicken my pace to get yeah, out. Yeah, same. And as they're going, I'm, I'd say to, I almost said to Laika, I'm like, I say to Rhea, I'm like, surely there's like a secret knock or something she was supposed to do? Too late now. Amalite's logic is I don't overthink anything and I'm a rogue. Therefore, rogues don't overthink things. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just knock. Um, as you guys come back out into the alley, from the second floor window of the building behind you, you hear, little birds, why are you trying to get in such an ugly door? Uh, and leaning, leaning out of the window is this beautiful green-skinned woman. Um, and I'd love it if you could all give me perception checks. Uh, 13. Ah, I was doing so well for two rolls there. Seven. Oh no, I rolled a seven. <laughs> so uh -huh. I got a 16. Uh, nine. Nine, 13, seven. Okay. Um, so everyone except for Laika, at first when you see this woman, you believe her to be some kind of a nymph-like creature, uh, which you haven't seen before in Afterworld. Uh, Laika, you're the only one who clocks that she has got uh, beautiful brown ram's horns coming out of her, out of her head, uh, which mark her as a tiefling. Uh, and she goes, check out the teeth. No, just kidding. <laughs> she goes, I would think little birds like you would be uh, uh, more tired after such a strenuous singing activities that little birds are wont to handle. We are. Do you know a place where we could roost for the night? I might know a place. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> I keep checking my persuasion as if it's going to go up from the plus <laughs> one of straight charisma. <laughs> Three. 
<laughs> you guys, we are gonna die this episode. All of, I mean, yeah, you know, every time Raya talks about how people tend to find her unlikable and um, untrustworthy, it's because of these roles. Um, she, you, you see her as she leans out the window. Uh, she takes a step out onto the ledge and takes the crossbow that she's had in her hand and tucks it behind her skirt um, and begins to make several gestures in the air. Uh, I would like knowledge arcana. Same, same. I'm gonna say, uh, I, I don't, um, uh, whatever it is you're doing, uh, we don't mean any, uh, any harm of any kind. Let's try the door handle. I got a second natural one, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> great, great, great. I got um, 10. I'm good at 10, that 10. one. I just rolled. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Rumbertech, were you doing an arcana check as well? I was trying to persuade the person not to cast whatever spell they're casting. Okay. Uh, what was your persuasion? I said... Um, no, no, no. Uh, what did you roll? Oh, I didn't roll. Would you like me to? Please Great. Uh, the door is open. Oh. Um, well, I'm gonna open the door. <laughs> Look at that big stretchy kitty. Wow. Said, that's the right thing to do, Mama. Open the door. No, no, that seems sketch. <laughs> don't go. Uh, in I there. would also like to try and persuade. I'll put my hands up and be like, uh, we don't actually mean any harm. Sorry. Uh uh, Dr. Rumbletack, what did you get? Tweet Eleven. Tweet. 11? Okay. Yeah. She finishes casting her spell. Um <laughs> and very handily jumps from the window onto an invisible floating disc and then onto the ground. Oh, okay, cool, great. Oh, that's um, incredible. Uh, as, as she lands. Just, uh, that's uh, quite impressive. Uh, cool. very... I have like one hand on my sword, but like the other one a little bit like out, just like, we don't mean any harm. Is the disc still there? Uh, yeah. Can I see inside the door? <laughs> you can see inside the door. Um, as you're looking inside the door and have opened it, she goes, wait, 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 please don't go through that door. Come follow me around the side. The disc is still there. This is you. Inside have... Yes, sure. Um, I would also it. like to insight while I'm touching the disc. Yeah. Can I, can I perceive anything inside the door? Uh, it is oh. dark. If you wanted to roll an investigation check for me, um, you could check for traps that might be in Well, this I got an eight, so. 15 for insight. 15 for insight. Okay, eight for checking for traps. You see one very obvious trap above the door that is a paint can. <laughs> that will like, fall on you if you walk any farther in. It's like tripwire. Um, we got a 15 insight. Who else rolled insight? I did, but it's okay. Um, like a this woman seems to be on the level. Uh, when when you roll that fifteen, oh, it was another seven. Sorry, <laughs> it's another seven. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on that fifteen insight, I will also give you that. Um, based on her words, you realize that she knows something about the opera, right? That's yeah. I I dire figured that dire out. Dire figured that out. You like uh, also have that <laughs> for sure. Um, like we're the same person sometimes, man. Okay, uh, uh, she seems to be on the level when she she sees you touching the tensor's floating disc. She goes, "That is tensor's floating disc. Surely one of you can do." This is very basic magic. Does he only have the one? Well, it is tensor created the spell, and then oh, oh, I thought you might be like renting it. Uh, no, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, and she dismisses it. Rumbletack no, I don't know how to do that. It's pretty cool. Rumbletack's going to write it in his notebook. Uh, and he's going to try to be sly about it, but not be sly about it. Uh, <laughs> notebook's like as big as he is. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to... Um, hi, uh, I'm, I'm Laika. Uh, this is Rhea, Dr. Rumbletack, and Amalite. Is, is that the a one paint bucket? Giving her names. 
it that's a fun one don't step any farther in beyond the paint the paint is sort of like a first embarrassment and then if you keep going down the hallway we 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 picked up uh some other more extreme uh pranks to, to yeah do. i would have kept going too so i'm glad we ran into you were, well looks like you were right jerry uh i suppose i but uh, mm, uh sorry um we have introduced ourselves uh do you mind? Uh, it would be our pleasure to learn your name. I'm Squinska. Come with me. Um, she she shakes her. Squinska. Squinska. Squizzler. It is S L I W I N S K A. Squinska. 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 She's a green tea plane. She's a green tiefling. Well, only I know that. Well, now that she's stepped out. Yeah, surely we know that. <laughs> uh, and she says, I saw you all fight at that opera fight. Oh, uh, were you there? How do you think we did? You did pretty good. You did fairly well for uh, newcomers, I suppose. Michelle said that you were all green around the edge did you see the feather duster i thought that was pretty clever of emily i did that was a that was a fun manifestation right um it did not it, it was did not work in, a, in its joke it did not work but it was very funny, you know. funny though oops sorry who's michelle yeah who's michelle uh he's the leader of uh who's michelle She's gonna roll an insight check on you guys. Are you lying or do you all forget the name Michelle? I don't think we ever got the name Michelle. Wait, is that the one I have? No. Is it? I think that's, is that seven? I guess you'll meet Michelle. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Let me go inside. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I I have a note. I remember I have a note somewhere. I just. Well, and also, I mean, we were in the thick of battle. We We've met a lot of people. Oh, here. no, no. Okay, no, I do have it. I did forget. Yes, thank you. Did you say Misha? This is Aaron asking. Michelle. Then no, I don't have it. Um. So I'll go, oh, Michelle de Saint-Aubin. Yes, Michelle de Saint-Aubin. Yeah. De Saint-Aubin. Oh, de Saint-Aubin. De Saint-Aubin. Like Aubin. Yeah. <clears throat> he he thinks he's so extra special. Ah, uh, come on, and she'll start to lead you down the alley. As we go, I'm nudging Ray and be like, "Who is Michelle Santabar? The little one. Which little one? Don't worry about it. How can you roll cell checks for me to whisper that? Yeah. Oh, I okay, sure. Are you being quiet. <laughs> I mean, I'm being like as quiet as I was. I don't super care if she. All right. Cool. Cool. I got oh. six. He was. Am I? No, he was a half elf. You said I'm the little one. I'm just yes. listening to your words. Okay, four. Great. But I'm now like try to remember. Sorry, it's been a while. Pause real fast. Can you re describe Seven to us? Seven was the half elf. He okay. looked like he was dressed in all black. Shakespeare looking velvet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Opera. I don't know why in my brain I was thinking he was smaller. Well, there was a halfling with him. Halfling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I I knew he wasn't that halfling. I think I thought he was also a halfling. So I'll say, um So you do not say he's the little one. No, I would have said um the she remembers what seven looks like. Song. I would say the bird guy. Well, you don't know that. I you don't. I, I would don't have just said like the one, the one, the the dramatic was... one. I would say the dramatic one because I thought it was close. Opera. Dramatic. There are lots of dramatic people. You'll recognize them when you see them. Okay. Um, sorry, I got like really chilly all of a sudden. So give me a minute here to wrap this. <laughs> You're um okay Slinska takes you to the door she takes out a little key that has got a bird on its handle puts it in the keyhole uh and opens the door so 
sorry, just for theater of the mind things, this is a different door than the door with the paint can. That was a different a different door than the door with the paint can was yeah as you so she leads you down the alley she okay. leads you away from that front garden entrance of the building and as you walk away she goes oh could you please close that door behind us as we go are we heading towards the door that ray and i were just looking at yes yeah, so you've gone down the alley and you go to the door that you were just looking at that the priest walked through she takes out a key um to open the door and she sort of she sh sort of tries to shuffle the dirt around her a little bit, uh, but she opens the door. She does not go in. No, she's going to go in first. She goes in first um, and leaves it open for you. And again, says, "Please shut it behind you." I'll go in. And she will lead you down a short hallway to a set of stairs. Lead you down those set of stairs and out into a small common area um, of a sort of living quarters, a shared living quarters area. There's a table set up in the side. Um, you see, Laika, you see the man that you saw at the inn for the Broken Tavern before you left for the memory trial. He is yeah. The one who was talking about killing gods, right? Yeah. Oh, fuck um, me. The small, dark, and handsome guy. Oh, he, oh yeah. Small, dark. Now that you can see him better, well, you can see that he is a gift zerai. He's got green, yellow skin that can uh, sort of read as brownish in certain lights. And he just looks up and looks at you all sort of questioningly. Um, he, he is the only one in this room at the moment. You can see that there's a hallway that branches off. Um, there's a little sort of open kitchen towards the back of the room. It's a pretty decent sized area. Um, and off to the side, there is a fireplace. It sort of looks like a classic in bar setup, but without the bar, because there's just the kitchen in the corner with its counters and everything. Um, and over by the fireplace is a tall half-orc man who is in this like, very flowy sort of pirate shirt um he's very broad and he seems to be like uh performing to himself but not saying any words out loud but it's very clear that he's like in the middle of something um and Sluin sorry my brain was just like forward continue uh, i realized that after i said pirate flowing shirt. yeah it's my <laughs> uh, oops he's he's uh got no but ford is ford skinny so you're good yeah, this guy's like big and broad and his green orc skin is definitely like a like a deep dark army green. And uh she gestures towards the table where there are uh, a lot of chairs set around it and she just shouts out "Michelle, your mommy issues are here. They finally made it." Uh, and she goes over to the half orc and you just hear a commotion. Rhea definitely blushes a little. <laughs> uh, when I, I turn to everyone else and I'm like, so that seemed like a barbed comment, but I have no context for it. Yes, yeah. uh, Miss Amrylite, is that like a common thieves term of some um, kind? I think Amrylite has found a roll from a table and is eating it and says, wait, who's Michelle? He I'm at the opera fight, he was the like the half elf dressed all in black, the big like ruffly collar. Oh no, that's not a rogue thing. That's just an insult. She eats her. Oh. What's the context though? Why are we someone's mommy issues? Well, it looks at Rhea. <laughs> Coming down the hallway uh, is the half work man that Rhea met at the opera, looking a little oh, bit flustered. Half elf. <clears throat> And he, he gives Swinska a look um, before spreading his arms and saying, welcome to our nest, little birds. It's nice to see that you uh, made it in one piece. That's your voice? What? 
Uh, yes. You have a nice voice. I don't know if anyone's told you that before. Well, people have told me that many times. And he leans Am I taller on the than back this man? Of one of the chairs and gives you a gives you a smolder. Am I taller I than this man? Back. What? Am I taller than this man? How tall are you? Like really tall. Probably six five. Probably a little taller than him. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say he's like six feet, if that. Okay. Okay. Good. That's 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 how tall I get. Like a six feet tall. Ooh, great. Okay. All right. Um, Leg's not buying this. You cover up your bag, or you just hold oh, on. I, your... I clutch. I clutch my bag. Okay. Um. Not in right. like a ah, uh, 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 I'm nervous, but more in just like a. <gasps> Yeah. Oh, in an I'm taken way. Yeah. yeah. And the bank's like, oh, my goodness, who is this? Who's this man? Who's this? He seems like a lot. Um <laughs> uh, but she's responding to you like, hey, you know, get away from she gets the vibe. Um so what can I do for little birds such as yourselves? We're looking for a place to hide for the night. Got yourself more trouble than the opera fight? That depends on... <laughs> <laughs> I like side I am like... <laughs> that depends on your definition of trouble, but I think the standard interpretation would be yes it he pulls out the chair and like sits down in it well what seems to be the trouble maybe we can help you out of it i i almost I feel doubt that. that yeah I think, i'm worried that if we not as a challenge to your skills or masculinity or anything i just don't think there's anything anyone could do to help us yeah and I, I don't I don't want you to be complicit in a pretty big, like big crime. I, I, I don't it's probably better for all of us if the details are left out. And I try and give him we like just a, need a place to crash for tonight and then we will be out of your hair and you never have to see us again. But for the record, what we did was really cool. And like good rogue stuff too. But also, yeah. maybe not anything worth writing home about or that anyone should look into in any way i don't know yeah. you'll, you'll it, it'll, it'll come out in like legends and rumors later and you can be like oh that was that group who did that and that that rogue that i respect and know very well was a part of that group and she sure belongs with the rogue guild specifically that part of it will stick out to you and i clap her on the back you're the rogue yeah. she's the rogue yeah she's well, really why good we, why don't we not talk about this some more over a couple of ales uh and he gestures to the gitseri who is also sitting at the table with you um and he gets up grabs some pints brings them back should is there something we should manifest in exchange for the ale we aren't uh in need of people manifesting anything oh. for us uh, Slowinska over there, she went to the mountain and she's pretty much got us covered. Uh, Slowinska is now sitting in the uh, orc's lap and talking to him about, you don't know what, they're talking in hushed voices. If you want to try and perceive or listen to them, you can. Um, but Can I get a general vibe check for like the room to sure. be like 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 are we in the middle of a sea of sharks or like yeah, like dude. what's the vibe in general i say this as someone with not very good insight yeah 14. okay um the vibe the vibe in general is that everybody seems to kind of have an idea of who you are and that you are not someone they're taking as a threat I'm a little offended by that. <laughs> that it's a potential for friendship more than like they're on guard against they're you. Threatened. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, as we're like walking over, going to like pull at Rhea's uh, cloak or whatever. I think we're already seated. 
Okay. okay uh, you're already sitting down. I think I'm just going to lean and be like, I don't, did I miss something? I feel like everyone knows who we are and I don't know who anyone is here. Except you. Well, three. I'm sorry. I do think that the doctor would recognize Michelle because Amalite made a really big deal about turning and looking at him at the office. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. Cool. But you might not. Right, yeah, I'll just be like. Oh. I, I think some of them were at the opera fight. Um, that guy was at the Whirling. What? Sorry. <laughs> Broken. The whirling Tavern. Oh, tavern I'm sorry. You're I just finished. Dis- I okay. just finished Disco Elysium. That's the name of the tap. The nice place there. It's fun. <sighs> You're good. That was the name Broken of the Spoken place. Tavern Wheel. Uh huh. Yes. You and that it. guy was at that. Yeah, I am sorry. I sent. Uh, I sent someone to just make sure you all made it out okay you're having someone watch us after you died but you think we're not capable of handling ourselves i knew it the whole time i spotted him instantly just because someone dies in front of you doesn't give you the right to have someone follow them a deception or persuasion check that's a lie right oh for sure i don't know okay Okay, performance. <laughs> I got a 19, but I would very much like for her to have pointed Deception. out. Deception. Deception. Deception? Yeah. I also got a 19. Okay. <laughs> but for sure pointed at the wrong person. <laughs> Great. But but then he's like, oh, I guess they were there too. Huh. Hmm. Uh well, all right then. Um I'm sorry. There's, Why are you uh, there's a lot there. of arguing happening between you all. Why okay. did I do what? Why did you care? Well, you seem to very obviously be desiring to join a thieves guild with that cloak. So I have to keep an eye on potential little birds. And he leans back farther in his chair, like the two feet on the ground situation with his legs up on the table. He's a I think you need to reevaluate your terminology. I'm not seeing anyone little here. So I, oh, what I, pur- I purposefully do not look at the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't they feel invisible. This is all right. Anyway. Have we gotten our food yet? Because Amalites. The, the ales are out. The ales, um, ales are at the table. He brought, uh, the Gitzari brought the ale over and he's also drinking. Um, I'll just be like, look, the only reason the only reason we're here is because we have nowhere else to hide. We weren't specifically looking to join your guild. The cloak was a to really hide my face. Disguise. It could have been more subtle. I'm just not very good at manifesting yet. And it was the best I could come up with as a way to hide my face. Actually, I have no idea what they're talking about. I just realized my bad. Yeah. No, but I still believe you would chime in to defend. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, you're like, I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm sure it was great. But it was great. I double down on it. Yeah. But it was perfect. Michelle, I don't know when you left Param, but when we left Param, cloaks like that were the height of fashion. And it didn't mean you wanted to join a guild. It just meant that you had style. Uh, he puts the chair legs back on the ground, sort of leans forward and goes, you know, it was the cloak combined with her uh, apparent desire to be unseen, but very obvious that led me to believe maybe she wanted to join a thieves guild, but I can see that I was wrong. Why would you want to invite someone to the thieves guild if they suck at being subtle? That was my thought too. Maybe to help them out, teach them, take them under my wing, and here Slinska coughs into her hand. Um, just mommy issues I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you you're a I, you're, uh, I have, I have oh. small smile look are you gonna help us out or not i am gonna help you out we in might have you do something for... in return for us but uh mm-hmm. for now for now i'll i'll help you out um 
all right so I wasn't joking about we're we will be leaving tomorrow morning so if there's something you need us to do where are you going if you don't mind my asking I do mind your asking I mind too and while I was halfway through like <laughs> God, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> I'm going to lean over to Amalite and be like, do we know where we're going? I don't know if we've decided. Have we decided? I, I was just going to say the first place that came to mind, honestly. All right. Um, I think we Ray did. Ray like, can tell that they, I'm <laughs> guessing that it's very obvious that everyone can hear what they're <laughs> So Ray is just like. <laughs> we can talk about where we're going later. Can you, uh, Amalite, can you roll a wisdom saving throw for me? Oh, fuck. You get plus four. Oh, cool. Um, then I got an 18. Okay, great. Um, you feel like in your peripheries, this very quiet, delicate force seems to be trying to get into your brain. And read real phone. fast but it um backs off when it sees that you've got like a mental fortitude around yourself real fast like a is mental. this being cast by someone within five feet of me is this something uh, being cast yes can you roll a perception check for me no, I'm just gonna take my hazard. What's your within? No, hold on. No, what? Then tell me also what your within five feet ability is. It is as a reaction. I can basically attack someone casting a spell within five feet of me. Okay, so uh, this person rolled stealth so that no one would notice the spell. So you can mm -hmm. roll perception checks if you would like. You'll have to be a twenty. <sighs> I can do that. I have good. I, it's a wait, no wait. I think that's the one I'm good at. Yes. Okay. Come on, dice. Oh, nope. And this is anyone who wants to roll a perception check can roll it. Yeah. Michelle is just infuriating and. <gasps> I got a natural 20. Hey. hey. Hey, Amalite, you are the only one who notices that the Githseri across from you is rolling a copper coin between his fingers and muttering into his hand as he looks at you. Subtle. When you look at him, he sort of like drops the coin and is starts flicking it up in the air and catching it instead of rolling it through his fingers. I'm, I mean, we, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to call him out. Okay. Um, what are you doing? You got, he just, he, what were you just doing? Hand on sword. Just trying to cast some sort of spell. I could sense that. I know it was you. I saw you whispering some sort of incantation. I saw you rolling a coin. Also I'm not sword. new to being a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle sort of pushes, uh, does his hands on the table uh, and goes, Rebel, what were you doing? Rebel? Rebel? Rebel. His name is Rebel. Well, fitting. Does he have a cause or he, is he without? No, he's without a cause. <laughs> cool shit. Did you name him that before or after he started being really annoying? His full name is Rebel San Jose. Um, a good name. Thank you. Uh, and he goes, Michelle, I was just trying to see where they are going in the morning. You, you, you are the one who is worried about them. Asked us all to be on the lookout. Asked me to go see where they were staying at the broken tavern. Make sure, oh, the, the, the bird with the white hair. She's definitely in over her head, whatever she's doing. Excuse me? I didn't, I didn't say that. I don't, that doesn't sound like holiday. This was this was a mistake, he and shouts, I like right behind up. him. Um, 
Ray gets up. Okay. Yeah. No. She goes. This is this was a mistake. And gets up and like starts walking back. Jerry is gonna try to grab her cloak <laughs> to be like, no, wait, wait, wait. Um, let's all just uh maybe breathe for a moment. Um, we very much appreciate your your hospitality. Um, yeah. No, it's 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 they're 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 exaggerating. And he gestures to sure, everyone, yes. everyone in the room. It's not holiday. Holiday will set you up with rooms and you can leave in the morning and it, it'll it be fine. And no more I'm spells not... trying to get yeah. in our brain and no more people following us. You lead them, right, Michelle? Can you promise us no that? More, no more people following. Nobody do any spells on them. And he looks at Rebel as he says that last one. Um, and, and before we go in our rooms, we're going to search them. And if we find any spells or any sort of little magical bits, you're going to take them out. A hobgoblin woman with uh, reddish pinkish skin comes out and just goes, what is going on? We're being shown very poor hospitality right now. <sighs> Michelle, and she looks at each of you and her eyes linger on Raya and she just goes, Michelle, just, just, I'll take care of this. Maybe you should just get scarce. Um, and he like doesn't say anything, but he goes uh, back down the hallway, and and Man. and she just goes, "Ha, hello, I'm I'm Halliday." Hi, nice to meet you. I'm like a sledge runner. These are my friends. This is Rhea. This is Amelie, and this is Doctor Rumbletack. Sorry, what was her name one more time? Halliday. H A. L L I D A Y. And you said she was what race? She is a hobgoblin. Pink, you said? Red, red. Red. Um, yes, we would very much like uh some some brooms where we could uh, perhaps just speak for a little bit, uh and, and maybe um, rest. We are all very tired. Do you want food or anything before you rest? Do you, you can make it yourselves from whatever we've got. Sure. Uh, we can also manifest something in exchange. Your uh, <laughs> your manifestation's no good here, and I would like to hold to that. Because you think our manifestation will be bad, or like what? Uh, no, no, um, feels like maybe you haven't noticed, but Michelle is not uh, acknowledging it, but has a little bit of a crush on this one. And so, no, little, oh little red. Wow. It's incredible. Oh no. Who could have thought a beautiful elven woman? Um, and so we're gonna help you we're gonna help you out and honestly this isn't uh i don't want to say that this isn't the first time he's done this because it hasn't happened in a long time but uh you know we don't have a lot going on right now so this is kind of fun for us meet some new people you guys could be part of the thieves guild remote branches i'm trying to get us to expand no one is helping me. Um, do you do all the work here or just most of it? No, I'm the brains. I'm the brains of this whole operation. That was Definitely pretty like obvious. You be in charge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Can I insight the um, Michelle likes Rhea, so we're going to help you situation? Yeah. I like how confused everyone looked about <laughs> <laughs> having a crush on Rhea. That was a confusion. We were all excited. I think Amalite was not confused, but Miss Bag was. <laughs> um, really? really? The white head one? one. <laughs> I got an 11 on Insight. Um, I know. It's real bad. <laughs> honestly, Doctor, like, what, what do you think of that line of reasoning as far as why someone would help somebody else? Does it feel logical to the doctor? No. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. Yeah. Checks out, checks out, checks out. 
So I do you did you want to eat first? Do you want yeah. I can show you rooms? Uh, we we can we wanna... can make our own food. I think uh, uh we're... room service also we also could also make our own food um and just do it ourselves i i think we could just use some just uh some time to rest we're just all very tired um am i whatever you need the... help with i would love to repay you in some way i i actually i'm gonna firmly agree with Rhea here i think the exchange on goodwill because I just, it's not setting well with me, even if it, I just really think we should pay you somehow. Is there like a spa here or like a, <laughs> like a like, um, top shelf? I don't know. Yeah, there, are, there are spas here. There are spas here. Um, Thieves Guild? In the Thieves Guild? No, I thought you meant like- oh, I meant like the accommodations that come with the room. Oh, know? no, absolutely not. Absolutely not, no. Uh, and she's going to lead you. She's going to start leading you towards a spiral staircase that uh, goes to another floor. Up or down? If you want to follow me. It goes up. Oh, cool. This goes up. Um, Why don't we get settled in the room and then one of us can run down and make some food and then bring it back up to everyone else. All right, so this, so- the charity doesn't sit well with you and she points at you like it and it doesn't sit well with you and she points at you Rhea and she goes honestly if you wanted to pay us all back you could just make Michelle as uncomfortable as possible by actually flirting with him boy doesn't know how to handle himself we uh, I'm so torn because Dyer loves this. That would be so funny. I don't think that will be as entertaining as you think it will be. I don't know. It could be kind of fun. Right. Don't you think? I just, I don't know if you, you know, I'm sure you're smart. You can tell for me. I don't think that's something within my skill sets to do for you. Like, who are we to stop growing skills just because we're dead? Right. Mm. It would be good practice. Amalite. It's, it's a new life, Raya. Especially if you, and if you don't Can like you disguise him. yourself as me. <laughs> oh, that feels maybe a little bit too mean. But, but, but before you do that, <laughs> you, you all had me go on that date with, with Lin Lenise. Lenise, thank you. Jesus Christ. With Lenise. And that was way out of my comfort zone. And I think I learned a lot about myself from it, even though I'm never talking to her again. You went on a date with the Baron Lenise Nedekoven. We've mm -hmm. been so busy. Yeah, she's a you real guy's bit. been dead. Like four days. Three days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get in these rooms and I'll we'll say goodbye tomorrow morning. This is you that's a lot. That's a lot. You've already four days, three days, and you've already been on a date with the Baron? What did you guys even what did you do? We went to the I'm opera. The date, but like for these past, you guys look exhausted. We, we are. Uh, we're, we are. But <laughs> we were at right the memory department. We were trying to complete our memory trials. Uh, we completed our memory trials. We completed all four of them. We have the papers to prove it. Okay. But they were. Freya they were looks difficult. uncomfortable for a second. She's taking you down a hallway, and she's walking slowly. You get the sense that with her slow sort of walk down the hallway that she's allowing you guys time to suss out where you are, if you want. I'm Rhea's trying to like mentally map exits. <laughs> Give me a, um, whichever's better perception or investigation. No, actually do your survival skill. That's what I was gonna ask, can I do survival? Yeah. Fuck me, all right. Okay, no more dice. 19. 19. Oh, okay. 13. Yeah, you're able to clock pretty easily. Cool. Um, and you can tell that the structure of this seems, doesn't seem wibbly wobbly. Cool. Um, Holiday is going to turn to you, Amalite, and just be like, listen, I don't know what's going on with the rest of them, but you seem like you want in to roguishness in general. She is a rogue. Excellent. 
Um, but I mean like a more, what I'm saying is if you want to come back, come around the side door, I can't give you a key, but if you knock three times, knock three times, oh, yeah. mess that up the first time. Okay. It's all right. No, I'm like a dip the other door, different door. Don't go to that front door. Well, maybe if I had knocked three times, there would have been a door that appeared in front of the other door and then it was magic. And that's what leads to the. Would have still been the paint can. Just We've gotten that. Ricker three times with that, which which we shouldn't be able to do because he knows about, he has a key to the other door. He's so dumb. Oh, and angry. Not a crazy kid. Oh, happily. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's my biggest fan. No, he's no one's fan. Um, all right. Do you each want an individual room? One room for the four of you, two rooms? I think uh, we should just do one. It, one one is fine. Thank One's you. good. Okay. We're practiced at it. Okay. Um, and she opens up a side room that's got bunk beds. Uh, and she's just like, this is uh a room that we use for guests if we need to keep them together. Insight check. Why are you sounding sketch with that statement? Not sounding sketch. Natural 20, tell me everything. Um, five dead bodies in the room. <laughs> I want to know the history of this room. The way that she says it implies to you that maybe sometimes this thieves guild holds people against their will Cool. Uh, when they do so, and it's a group of four, <laughs> sometimes keep them together in this room. And that's why they I have got a 17. Yeah. four people. You got a 17? Yeah. Okay, hold on. So is this door like the closing kind of door? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As opposed to the not closing. I'm sorry, I'm not locking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the very sick. inside or the outside like a you you get a or raya you get a similar amount of information that like yeah. yeah any chance you'd be willing to give us the key to this door yeah Both keys. Key ring. i mean as long as we have one doesn't matter if they have the other she gives well, you what if ring. the lock on the outside is different than the lock on the inside raya that's mm -hmm. smart thinking but they like would both inside. still um nah. Okay. No, well, she's, she's saying she's I like, get I get you. Yeah, yeah. Different keys. I don't. This is this room's not that clever. Um that was maybe a little bit more than I should have said. But All it's right. it, is it's you it's clever in a diff it's clever in another way. Or there are other clever rooms. You guys have your key. <laughs> if you want food, you can come get it. Um We'll all be downstairs. No one's going to come up to the second floor. No one's going to disturb you. I'm like, just closes the door. It's wood paneled walls. The, the bunk beds are also made of wood. Um, there's nothing fancy to them. Uh, if you look a little bit close, there's some stains on the wood that could be a little bit iffy. Uh, maybe we're blood at one point. Okay, blood. I was like, how iffy? Blood iffy is, is absolutely fine. Pull out my black light. 
Mm. No, no, no. Bad choices. Don't do it. it. (laughs) Manifest a black light just to be disturbed. Um, uh, But there are four beds. Uh, They're made up. Sheets look like they've been on there a while. Like, it's not necessarily a fresh room. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like the, yeah, you get it. Who wants which bed? I call top bunk and I start climbing. (laughs) Are these. Oh, okay. I have many questions. Can we start with, um, what is the, uh, what, Miss Rahea, you and the the person, uh, are you involved? Did you know each other in? No. Then why and how and when did any of that happen? God, we love at first sight. <sighs> We ran into each other at the opera. Some words were exchanged. I may or may not put a dagger to put a dagger to his throat. It I'm just... sitting on the I'm sitting on the other bed like this, kicking my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it just I don't know. He clocked me at the opera. Kept calling me little bird and flicking my hair. Which is I really weird. It... like you'd think that he would be saying that if he was like really tall, but he's not. He I guess seems tall. I mean, I I think everyone's tall, but that's he seems tall. Um, mm. That taller so, than Raya, not by much, but he is taller than Raya. Yeah. So, are you involved, the two of you? No. Do you want to be involved? You like him? No. No. What you think I've been like? sneaking off while you all were sleeping to meet up with him no but i mean he's not he's not can i just point out that the emphasis you put on that last word made it sound like you are sneaking out when we're asleep i'm not sneaking out while you're asleep okay if anyone would though it would be you you, amalite because you're a rogue okay yeah Fair. Thank Look, you so much. <laughs> I have not been sneaking out at night. I am not interested in Michelle. I haven't seen him since the opera fight. I don't know what his deal is with me, other than apparently mommy issues. Um, and um, what does that yeah. mean? I'm gonna guess his mom was an elf, and he has. So why would he like elves if his mom was an elf? Sometimes when a person has things that they if they want, feel like their mom or dad don't love them, sometimes they seek for look for it in romantic relationships. Oh, for people who kind of sad then fit the profile. Relatex sits down on one of the beds and like puts his head in his hands and <laughs> is just like breathing a little bit. If they're teasing him about not being getting enough love from his family growing up, like. It sounds like the people here don't like him very much. That's like not a nice thing to joke about. Well, it's It's funny funny because. (laughs) It's funny because we're not as nice as you are. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, So, but that seems, that seems. It seems strange to just offer people free housing and the like for a, a crush, I suppose. I I, I don't know. It, it seems a little suspect. And um, honestly, these rooms are um, make me a little nervous. Are we sure we should stay here? Perhaps we should find somewhere else. Uh, or maybe we can get... Uh, we can exchange something so that these people can smuggle us out of the city uh, and then maybe we can rest somewhere else um, that is not here in this room with all of the things in this room. What things in this room are bothering you? Pretty nice room. Oh, uh, I mean, it is a perfectly nice. It's this. Um, well, so um there's weird stains in different places uh and they seem oh i think that's just blood right yes and that uh that looks like it's just blood me i don't know if it would disturb (laughs) you 
I, but for me, that is not something I'm used to. I, re I reach out to the closest patch and kind of touch it. Is it wet? Yeah. Like, how long has it been there? You'll have to give me an investigation check. Lick it. I really don't think you should touch that. That's not, I wouldn't. Uh, 14. Um, it seems like it's been there a while. It's pretty dried in. It seems like a stain that they couldn't get out. It just looks like they probably couldn't get this out after whatever they did. Like, it's they been here a pretty long time. Very hard also, so you but... think there would be other stains that they did get out at some point then? You know, if this is a jail. Probably. Well, yeah, probably. So then does that mean we are in jail? Right. No, we have the key. Ding, ding, ding. Does it work? I go and try the key in the door. It works. Oh, that would have been so at embarrassing first, for me. At, <laughs> at first, you think it doesn't work, but you realize that you've you've just locked the door, and so then you turn it again, and and the door opens. So there is a moment of like, oh no, we can't get out. I just it, it makes me nervous that we are in a thieves guild, and there are people after us. I feel like perhaps um, no offense, Miss Amelite, but um, perhaps thieves might be willing to perhaps sell us to the highest bidder if they knew um, where we're going. Uh, if why I was trying not to tell them anything about what had happened or what we were planning. And we did it. But well, it was really cool. Sure. Um, where else? Here, the problem we don't there is we don't know anywhere else to hide. And I think I, you know, everyone was saying they were pretty tired and felt like they need to rest before we tried anything. So I well, don't as know. a reminder, I'm exhausted. I'm I'm also very tired. I, I don't really have any tricks left up my sleeve. I've got nothing. Here, if it'll how about if it'll make you feel better, um I'll keep watch. No, Rhea, you're you tired need, too. You need to keep in mind that these people have been dead for maybe centuries. Yeah. And this is probably like the only fun thing that ever happens is that their leader has a crush on someone and then has this hero complex. You know, Doc, we're used to it as women. We, I think, have experienced stuff like this. You know, maybe. <laughs> I've heard it happens to women and I think it's just now happening to us. Yeah. I'm sorry, what exactly happens to women? You know, you like go to a, you go to a, a tavern and somebody sends you a mead because they want to get to know you. Well, this is just that, but afterworld's version. So Although the, the, mead thing, the mead thing did literally also happen to us. So, well, yeah, that, I mean, that, it looks like there's multiple versions here. Yeah. Well, that just seems like putting unnecessary pressure on you since you need a place. Look, to I. I don't know if I trust trust Michelle or Rebel, but Halliday seemed on the level. And I like the, that she gave us the key. And we have nowhere else to go. Yeah. All right. But I think that we Just should- Just for one night. I think, we, I think we have to get out of town tomorrow. And um, they can probably help us. I was going to ask, I, I don't trust them either, but, but but perhaps they would be better at knowing how to perhaps smuggle something out of the city. Also, where are we going? I don't know where we're going. Have Please? we decided where we're going? Well, are we going to find Leica's trainer? Rhea's master. Fuck. <laughs> right? Yeah, my, yeah. We also my <laughs> mentor, not my mentor. Master. Sorry, my master, your mentor. <laughs> But we also we're, don't know where they are, right? We're, we're, I think we have to go to Records Town, or we to if we to want to find to out where they are. and smooth things over with her, we could still try and disrupt the trains and see if that is entertaining enough to at least buy us time. Forgot about that. We still have to figure out a way to help Roscoe. We do, but I um has she spoken to you at all? Can she still after your tether was broken? I don't think so. Um I I like I like go through the steps of casting 
chill touch for my hand. So it's like a, hold on, what is, what are, what are my components? The chill touch. Verbal somatic. So I kind of like mutter under my breath and move my hand and like hold it out. And I'm assuming nothing happens. Nothing happens. No, your hand remains the same. It's the same. I don't have any. That it usually is. I don't have any spells. So I, I don't think there's a connection anymore. Do you mean you don't have access to magic at all? Oh, I think I still have some. Take a dagger, slice of my arm, see if I can. <laughs> You're <laughs> too tired to be messing with that right now. Oh, that's fine. Rhea goes unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, but now we're Is definitely she... sleeping here. If she's going to be, see? Oh, there you go, Doc. There's an example of how blood gets all over rooms like this. Yes, I can see that. That's lovely. Great addition. Sorry. Um, sorry. Does it work? Oh, yeah. You see my dagger's on fire. Oh, it works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I suppose our choices are either to try and do this train heist or, oh, I look at uh, Leica and Emily. Um, Miss Rhea, she doesn't have the darkness watching her anymore. We can tell her about everything. We tell her about everything. <laughs> I am going to kill a god and make my bag the new god. I was also there for that part. Oh, I thought you left. Yep, I thought so too. And then I rewatched last episode and that last episode and I was there. <laughs> and I guess you're all caught up. I, I was also there thought... for most of it. The only part that I wasn't there for was Jerry's notes. And so I wasn't there for um, the fact that New Life was a scam, that the darkness is trying to return to Param. And that no one has succeeded. Yeah, that right. Basically. I just that's what I just animated that before we started. Hey. I, yeah. yeah, I um, like show you my notes in the book, and I'm like, I thought also we were saying that perhaps we wouldn't say that thing out loud that you just said, Miss Amalite. About right, I died or did miss it? What did Amalite say out loud? I said that we're gonna kill a god, and I'm gonna make my bag <laughs> a god. I thought we just weren't saying that because of Raya. That's my bad. I thought we weren't saying it because it's a bad idea. I thought that's what we were doing. Oh, no, I still want to do that. Oh, no. Uh, so I totally forgot. I fucking negotiated the two of you into thinking you were each cool with this. <laughs> <laughs> I totally fucking forgot about that. Well, it sounds like there's been a bit of miscommunication. I think we should sleep on it. Sure. Jerry, would you sleep better if we take watches? I, I don't, I'm honest. Uh, no, oh. because it's, it's gross in here. I don't, uh, <laughs> can I, can I attempt to manifest a small bed for myself? Here, I will, here, I'll pull out, um, I think I have a bedroll. Pots. Can I try to manifest a paint bucket to put on the door? So if anybody opens it other than yes. us. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I have a bedroll. So I pull, I like take my bedroll out of my backpack and lay it down. Also has blood on it. It's just your blood. <laughs> uh, the it's DC just stains. I washed it. Anymore. What did you say? DC 14 for Amalite with a paint bucket. I also have a bedroll. I take my bedroll out. Yours probably doesn't have blood on it. No blood on mine. I rolled it too. It smells kind of smoky, oh, but okay. it will do. Uh, yeah, it's been by campfires. So, um, right. what does my bell? Can you remind me what my bell does from Shenanigan? It doesn't really matter because I'm just going to tie it to the. Oh, hand. so the the bell that you have, it'll change colors. It's it's sort of like a mood ring bell. Um, it is detached from you now, and if you put it on somebody else, it will just be on them and constantly ringing. But you can attach it to the door. Uh, and you get the sense that it won't stay attached to the door. Like, you will be able to take this off. Cool. You don't know if any of your friends will be able to. Cool. What did the mood ring thing symbolize? Or just that it can change colors? Um, roll me an insight check. 
Oh, it's better than a two. Ooh, 17 plus. Oh, uh, 17 plus. So Great. Big, yeah. Yeah. Um, you get the sense that the colors that it was changing while it was on you, because I think that's the only time that it really changed colors, sort of reflected the goddess of shenanigans mood or attitude towards you or like the bells maybe in attitude towards you because it did resolve itself once you had the dream and it was resolved and it came off of your body cool okay i attach it to the doorknob so if anybody turns it or opens the door we'll hear right uh, all right so let's just all get some rest i think no matter where we're going we have to leave the city and i think I think we should take the nightmares. I think we should too. Oh, yes. Because we can't take the train. And my reindeer is not big enough to carry all of us. And they're called nightmares. Yes, that is where Plus, the fly came from in my question. Doctor, I'm really good with animals, so I'm sure I'll be able to get you set up with like a really nice one. I don't know if that's how that works, but maybe they have I, them in your size. Maybe there's like a smaller one. Well, maybe a, night pony. I a, po a night pony. That would be so cute. Have, have you guys gotten an explanation of the nightmares yet? That they're yes, not I, just horses. They I think we're choosing to ignore that. Yeah, man, oh, I'm not. You like, are. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, okay. We know a little bit. We know a little bit about it. We know that there's something that you have to face your greatest fear in order to ride them. Aim your own nightmare. Okay. Yes, Great but like has just assumed sure that. that yeah, like has just assumed happen. that she'll be able to do that, and it'll be just like any other horse. Okay. I um think that does make the most sense as far as logistically being able to move around, but also it doesn't seem like the type of thing that would be very um subtle, and if we wanted to perhaps sneak out of the city, I don't know if that's the best choice perhaps someone here could help us sneak on to the train to Records Town. I don't like the idea of being trapped on a train. Me neither. But I do like the idea of us sneaking out of the city. So someone could maybe sneak us to like where we could meet the nightmares. Is that, do we even know where the night, is that, are there nightmare stables? Is that on the map? They're out in the wild. I think we have to tame them ourselves. Very cool. The nightmare stables, there are a couple places in the city. If you open oh. up your map to check, there is a place in this section that is sort of close to the edge of the city. There was a similar place like this um, close to the memory department and like the, which is on the edge of the city that's closer to Casa de Darkness. So this noir edge of the city is closer to the uh, train that'll get you to the Wood of the Lost in the identification department. So you will have to go around the city a little bit um, out of your way if you were to grab nightmares from this section and make your way to Records Town, which is, you know, it could is doable, could be doable. Um, it's just a little bit longer, uh, but there's, so there's like nightmare stables set up in the three quadrants, let's say, of the city. And there is another stables area near the train to records town it just also sounds like perhaps the wastes are very dangerous um perhaps yeah but you got you got us look at us nothing's tougher than us i'm like yeah. like this kicking on the t on the <laughs> bed while i say that <laughs> i just it seems like it'd be safer to take the train and more direct. Uh, and then we also wouldn't have to tame the whole nightmare. Situation. All right, but if you were her, are you more likely to look for us on the train? Or, or rather, if we're on the train and it's just some guys who have to find us, they can just get on the train and then we can't get off the train. That's true. That's scary. I'd much rather have like a critter under me so I can like, woo! You know, chances are they will also be watching the nightmare places totally. because the, the train and the nightmare place are the only two ways to get out of town. But like the train runs on a schedule and we can go to the nightmare place whenever and leave whenever. And like, like I said, if they do find us, we have a better chance of escaping on a nightmare than if we're stranded on a moving train with nowhere to go. 
I think we're also maybe jumping to the gun because if anybody's going to have a secret way out of the city, it is the people of this guild, even if it's just a tunnel to get to the waste. And then what, we just walk through the waste? We, that's where we find our own nightmares. They live out there, right? You, you want to tame wild nightmares? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen Rachel's face. <laughs> from, the, from the information that you've been given, uh, it seems like these nightmares are, you, you can't set, tell if they're sourced from anywhere. So you could assume that they're from the waste, that there are just nightmares out there. Oh, that's just where everybody rides them? Yeah, that's just yeah. people ride them. That's where you, like, get them, too. My bad. Can we that make some sense. sort of roll to sense, like, if it'd be one of those things where, like, the nightmares are tied to the darkness where whoever happens to be in charge of Afterworld, kind of like anyone with a pact would be. Sure, you can make some kind of... Can uh, I roll history from Sybil's book that I read uh, yes. to yeah, see you if she can see her book. Um, you can do that at advantage. The rest of you can roll insight checks. Except I think I think one of you, oh, beautiful, natural 20. I think one of you had a, one of the books from Roscoe Dirt, right? One of the, did you get the Western? I don't think we did. I don't think we did either. We definitely didn't get him one from the library and I don't think he gave. And he might have given me one, or maybe that was from our interview. Okay. Um, yeah, you said you would bring him back. Which is canon. From the I said I would bring back. Right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay, so Ray got a natural 20. For Ray a total of 25, if it's in sight. Um, I got a 17. 17? I also Come got on. a 25, but for history. All right, for history. Um. According to Sybil's book, uh, she's got a very small section about nightmares, and it seems like the nightmares are sort of the collective fears of everyone in Afterworld that get manifested when someone is specifically like, I'm going to tame one of these nightmare horses. Their origin, she's kind of iffy on, but it seems like the who and Rhea, you also get this notion, having been tied to the darkness dash euphoria, you have this sense and idea that the bond that is formed is between nightmare and rider and it is not between nightmare okay. and deity so like melon euphoria wouldn't be able to track you track us through the nightmares yeah any better than through like a horse okay cool yeah yeah then if you manifested a horse yeah i i just i think that that's our best chance because maybe yes we maybe we could sneak into the waste but without a, a mount yeah never mind i had a bad idea and i would like for it to be stricken from our unofficial record rumble tack uh sure. who is taking notes and strikes it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that was a bad idea okay anyway all right so rest and then tomorrow we go get nightmares, see if yeah. maybe they can sneak us to the nightmares. That sounds good. The best bet. Right? Do you think that the other Roscoe is all right? Well, if he's not, we'll see him when we get our Roscoe. And if he isn't all right, there's nothing we can do right now. I got a sense from when Euphoria talked to me that this might be a different situation. So I don't know if he'll be there. They might let him go since he- just... No, like worse than, than oh. Roscoe. Oh. Um, but you know he was only around for like not even a day so <clears throat> as you say that and settle <laughs> in for the evening um, was there anything else you wanted to do before you guys take a long rest yes okay I um, Rhea's gonna like stay up and then like, is gonna lie down in bed, is not gonna fall asleep. Once everyone else is asleep, I wanna 
sneak out of the room, which we know I'm so good at. <laughs> there's a fucking tape bucket. No, no there's not. You're going to manifest it. Oh. So you're going to but have I know to get past the bell on the door. Yes, I know the bell's on the door. So my plan is I have like my cloak and I'm going to like put it over it to try and like muffle the sound and then very slowly turn the door handle. Okay, let's roll that stealth check and see how well this works out for you. Everyone, if you could uh, just double check your passives for me. Your passive perceptions. Sorry, I'm trying to think if she would have taken her armor off. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> More for disadvantage reasons. Um, yeah, yeah, for disadvantage reasons. <laughs> Yeah, hard to have sex in armor. Um, Depends on the armor. You're at a disadvantage. I don't think she would have. Who knows what could happen. Oh, that first roll was so good, too. <laughs> I, I think every, everyone's passive perception beats me. <laughs> what was your roll? It was an 11. An 11? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, everyone. Yeah, that was why I, I know I was, we just listened. Everyone the, the, the bell makes a large cowbell clink and everyone wakes up. God, uh. What's wrong? Ray, why are you up? What's happening? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I just was. Oh. I knew you were sneaking no. out. To see him. How many <laughs> nights has this been like going that. on? Oh, I, you, I just woke you all up. You think I successfully have snuck out of the room? Look, I just, I was just going to go down. I can't sleep. I was just going to go down to the bar for a second, okay? All you had to do was ask. And Amelia rolls over. You were asleep. What? <laughs> it's nothing. Go back to sleep. Have fun. Be safe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I slip out and close the door. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna get downstairs. Um, before that, actually, can I pull out Pid as she's leaving? Yeah. Be like, just make sure she's all right. And then send Pid to follow. Okay. Pid's gonna look at you and go, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. No mustache. <laughs> Vampire. <laughs> Pid as quietly as Pid can. Oh, so cute! Um, yes. Get a stealth check for Pid. I'm gonna be like, if she's in trouble, come back and wake us. Uh, oh, 19. <gasps> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Um, Pid, Guys, my first roll was a 19. It would have been a 21 stealth. I uh, was sound asleep. Wow. Very different. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. All right. So Pid is following you downstairs. You do not notice Pid. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm. Yeah. Describe for me what you want to be doing here. I'm looking for. I go down. Like I go down the stairs and I look around and see if I can see Halliday. Um, Halliday is not. I know. So hot, exciting. Sorry. Uh, but Rebel, the one who cast a spell, he's still sitting at the table. He is now uh, carving a piece of wood like into a little figurine using these two sort of ethereal well not two using one um ethereal kind of looking dagger and he just kind of looks up at you and nods and goes back to his whittling but i'll go stand next to him you. okay all right and say um i'm looking for holiday uh she's in her room down the hall uh, they, it is kind of silly, but we have our names, our marks on our door. Hers is a uh, Robin. Aww. Is she gonna mind if I disturb her? What's Robin, people? <laughs> is she the thief? So she's a Robin. <laughs> sorry. Ooh. I'm so sorry. That was Dyer's joke. I didn't intentionally <laughs> mean to make that joke. Dyer literally suffered psychic damage from telling yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's down. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Dyer. I love it and I'm gonna use it forever. You're welcome. 
Okay. Sorry, Ray. What did you? What did you? Is she, ask? Gonna, is she gonna mind if I bother her? Um, she's probably asleep, so I'll just be careful about waking her up. But no, we aren't going to mind if you bother us. We want to be friends with you. I'm sorry I cast a spell at your friend. I just wanted to know what you're getting yourselves into. Nothing. Lies, lies, lies. Hmm. You don't want to join the Thieves Guild? Yeah. And I walk away <laughs> down in the direction of Paladay's room. Mm -hmm. um, I will just like lightly knock on the door. Okay. Um, there is some soft sounds inside, and then the, the door opens a little bit. And you see Holiday squint out at you. Hi, I'm sorry to wake you. Um, I just wanted to ask a favor, and in case we don't get time tomorrow, I just wanted to make sure. Um, do you know the Broken Tavern Inn? Yeah. There's a little fire genasi kid? Yes. There's a little fire genasi boy there. His name is Char. We, we said we would help him, uh, with his memory trial, but, um, we messed up and we can't because it's going to put him in too much danger. So I was wondering if there's anyone here that you would trust to do that. Yeah. We can do that. Did you guys get yourselves in trouble with uh, the big man, as it were? Elvis? The deep dark? Yeah, Elvis. Oh, Actually, technically, I should have said Clarence. Sorry, Clarence. Um, Ray is going to try and, like, not respond and just keep looking at her. Um, so I'm going to e need either a deception yeah. or persuasion check. I think they're the same. Come on, dice. <laughs> 15. Um, she opens up her door a little bit more to you uh, and tries to read your body language as if like, would you want to come in or not to talk about this further? Nah. Okay. Um, I was going to say... In that case, she's going to say we are prepared to help you. Did it start off as a whim of Michelle because he thinks you're cute? Sure. But Slinska watched you guys in the opera fight. Ricker has his own thoughts and opinions on everything, but she says you're solid. She says that you're uh, the kind of people that this Thieves Guild would want to know. Um. I appreciate that, but um, We're I help you in whatever your next steps are. If you have a way tomorrow to um, sneak us to some nightmares, I think that would be all the help we we need. Uh, I can get you easily to the stables in this area. Do you need to get to stables in another area? Uh, I don't know. Maybe somewhere, I guess, more near the outskirts of the town would probably give us a better chance of not being seen. <clears throat> Swinska and Van Pombriak will meet you in the morning. Cool. Um, uh, tell Zephyr at the Broken Tavern Inn. Um, if she doesn't believe you that you're from us, that, oh dear. Um, just tell her this letter is hers and we're sorry we couldn't keep the promise that we made. Okay, say that one more time. I missed the first part. Tell her that the sled is hers 
and we're sorry we couldn't keep the promise that we made. All right, I will let her know. Thanks. Um, someday if there's anything we can do to repay you, let us know. Oh, we will, we will. Um, he's not, he's not a bad guy, you know, he's just, He's just, he, he should go to therapy and so there's not really therapists in uh, this part of the city. Fair enough. For what it's worth. And then she goes, <laughs> <laughs> she closes the door. Next episode, we all go to therapy. Yeah. yeah. I did that. We did that in one of our D&D campaigns. We all had to go through therapy sessions. It was a while. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll go back to the room. I'm gonna... It takes Ray a while to follow. Oh, face. <laughs> That's Emily <Amelie> sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it takes Ray a little while to get to sleep. Yeah, because she's nervous of what will happen when she does. But she also knows she needs to rest. So eventually she lets herself drift. She drift into her meditation. You fall into your meditation and... Uh, are only greeted with your mind. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and you all finish a long rest. Ooh. <sighs> While uh, in Cassida darkness, what you don't see and will never know is the unmitigated fury of Euphoria at having lost her connection and pact with you and at having the first henchman that she has created for Afterworld be utterly bamboozled by a group of mortals. Um, as he lays beaten and bloody prostrate before her, she takes one of her iridescent arms, places her middle finger on his forehead, and in her rage, sends him back to the dust and motes he was created from while her pink suits look on. And that's where we're gonna end tonight's session. Ooh, Rosie, we're so sorry. For joining us. Uh, remember your champions, your scholars, and you have great boobs. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>